Hey everyone, this is Kyle Hamrick from School of Motion, and welcome to another video in the Learn from the Pros series on Adobe After Effects. Continuing on our exploration of features available in the After Effects timeline, in this video, we're going to learn about blending modes. Blending modes are an essential part of the compositing workflow and also have a ton of both creative and utility uses. You may already be familiar with them from other design or video applications. You'll find many of the same modes from Photoshop or Premiere, for example, but After Effects also has some unique modes you won't find in other apps. Let's start by making sure we know where to find these in the program. After Effects actually consolidates the switches and modes columns into one space by default to leave more room for the rest of your timeline. So if you only see these switches, there's actually a little toggle button right here at the bottom of the panel. You can also swap these by pressing the F4 key. You can add or remove them by clicking these icons here in the lower left corner of your timeline panel, or you can add or remove any of the columns by right-clicking up here, choosing Columns, and then enabling the ones you'd like to see. You already know that in the After Effects layer stack, whatever's on top is what you see. Blending modes allow you to change how After Effects interprets that, so you could use only some of the information from the layer, like white and black values or color. The blending modes are grouped by type, often with a couple options within each group. I won't be covering all of these, but I'll give you a good overview of the most commonly used modes. The default mode for every layer is normal, which just means no blending occurs and you're seeing it displayed normally. The second group are the subtractive modes. Using these will always result in a darker final image. The most commonly used is multiply, which takes the white areas of this layer and makes them transparent. The next group are the additive modes. These are basically the opposite of what we just saw and will always result in a lighter final image. The most common of these is probably screen, which keeps the white values and makes the black areas of this layer transparent. The other modes within these groups are variations on this functionality and may be more subtle or more pronounced, and exactly which mode is right will depend a lot on the images or videos you're using. As you can see, these can be great for something like adding texture to your composition, but they're also really useful for everyday tasks. Let's say I've been given a client logo, but it came with a solid background. I could probably take this into Photoshop and cut it out, but with blending modes, I don't even need to do that. I'll just place this where I want it to be, and then use a blending mode, screen in this case, to instantly composite this in. You'll also use these two groups for common compositing tasks, like if you want to add snow, rain, smoke, or other atmospheric elements to an existing shot. From here, things start getting more specialized. This next group enhances contrast. Overlay, for example, is essentially a combination of multiply and screen where the base layer's light parts will be screened by white areas in the overlaid layer. The dark parts of the base layer will be multiplied by black areas in the overlaid layer, and areas where the overlaid layer is 50% gray will be unaffected. Overlaying a copy of a layer on itself is a quick way to increase contrast, and this group comes in very handy for fine-tuned control when used in combination with adjustment layers and effects. The modes in this group also give you some really cool stylistic options when used with solid colors or gradients. Difference is a mode that typically isn't visually useful, but has some nice utility purposes. Let's say I was given a style frame in a non-editable format, but have access to the original pieces. Using the difference mode, once I get those elements perfectly lined up, they'll turn completely black. So this is a great mode for any kind of comparative work, where I want to be able to see any differences between layouts, between different frames, and so on. These matte modes work kind of like cookie cutters, allowing you to use a layer's alpha information, or its inverse, or the luminance information, or its inverse, to essentially slice through everything below it. I'll talk more about the concepts behind this in the next video, covering track mats. Constantly scrolling through this long drop-down menu can get a little tiresome, so you may want to try this keyboard shortcut instead. If you hold Shift and press the plus or minus keys at the top of your keyboard, it will quickly cycle through all the modes. There are obviously more blending modes than we have time to cover today. 
I'd encourage you to drop a few example images or videos into a composition and just experiment with the different modes to get a good idea of how they all work. You can also check out the After Effects documentation for a thorough explanation of each mode and how it works. And you can also check out this helpful article over at schoolofmotion.com for more examples of how these can be used. As you've seen, blending modes are extremely useful and allow you to create unique looks you probably couldn't get any other way. Be sure to check out all the other videos in this Learn From the Pro series on Adobe After Effects. For Adobe Creative Cloud, I'm Kyle Hamrick from School of Motion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.